Hi everyone, I'm Josh and this is Josh Wright Piano TV. A few weeks ago I posted a video entitled How I Practice Day One of Practicing the Chopin Concerto in E Minor, uh, the, the first Chopin Concerto, and I was just taking a section that I was reading for the first time. I mean, I, I think I'd read through it like once, but no real practice, and then showing you how I practiced. And that got an incredible response. A lot of you emailed me and commented like, do more videos like this. So um, today I'm just labeling this one day three. This is not my third day of practicing the concerto as a whole. I've probably spent about seven hours on it so far. Um, I know that just sounds pathetic. I'm working on some other pieces as well and I'm teaching a crazy amount right now because of the uh, coronavirus quarantine, answering a lot of emails, how do I set up lessons um, for my students. Uh, so I hope the email correspondence is helping and uh, I'm doing my best to get to all those emails. So thanks for your patience. Um, I know I don't always respond in a timely manner. Sometimes it takes me a couple of weeks, but it's just hundreds come in and it's hard to keep on top of that and do my private teaching and uh, practicing and my online courses. I'm a little bit warmed up right now. Uh, I just did a VIP masterclass series video um, about this concerto, actually. A student had some questions on these thirds. How to get those more relaxed and then the uh, the double or the parallel fourths at the end. Um, so I'm kind of relaxed uh, and a little bit warmed up right now, but I wanna show you kind of what I would do to warm up. So the reason I said day three for this is I've spent about three hours on this development section. So the part that starts Beautiful. And this middle part, which is just, this is like my favorite moment of the whole concerto when he goes to the F sharp major. Okay, and so this development section, it starts on, this is the Paderewski edition, uh, it starts on page 30 and it goes through to uh, page 41. So we're talking about 11 or 12 pages. I've spent about three hours on them. I am not Daniel Trufinov or a lot of my other colleagues that learn things at absolute lightning speed. I'm also not going to edit any of my mistakes out today. So you guys, I'm sure will see a lot of mistakes, but I wanna show you how I'd practice. Once things are starting to get kind of smooth in my hands, I mean, these passages are feeling very familiar. I went through and I did some harmonic analysis my last practice session. So for instance, like A minor, B7, E minor, F sharp seven to B minor, C sharp seven, sorry, F sharp minor, G sharp seven to C sharp minor. And it was amazing. After I did that, the the passage started to feel more and more confident because I'm just thinking in terms of large key areas. There are differing opinions on how intense you wanna get with your harmonic analysis. Some teachers want Roman numeral analysis with circled passing tones and um, neighbor tones or uh, incomplete neighbor tones. It's been a little while since I took a theory class. Um, but I like to just do uh, broad key analysis when I'm in these very modulating sections, these sections. And then he goes D sharp seven to G sharp minor, A sharp seven to D sharp minor. And some of those get a little tricky, like D sharp seven rather than E flat, E flat seven or G sharp minor rather than A flat. Well, I guess A flat minor is fine, but G sharp minor is more common, but like A sharp seven to D sharp minor. Again, uh, is it easier to think in terms of B flat minor to E flat minor? Yeah, but that's not what Chopin writes. And Chopin really is an absolute genius when it comes to modulating. I mean, just look at this etude, for instance. He gets from F major all the way to B major. And then he modulates all the way back to F major and he just does it so effortlessly. So this development section is really quite special. I'm a total sucker for sequences. 
Um, so when you're like modulating through different keys, stepping around the circle of fifths or the circle of fourths. So we're just gonna take a look at this. I'm gonna warm up really slowly and I'm just gonna show you kind of my process. We probably won't get through more than a page or two in this session. I just am keeping an eye on the clock here. We'll end before it hits the 30 minute mark. Um, just so you guys aren't here forever and so my camera doesn't run out. This is a DSLR, it cuts out at 30 minutes, but here we go. have enough to work on right there. So let's just start with that. Okay. Th this is the time once I can kind of play through it smoothly like that, that wasn't perfect. As you can see, there was just tiny little pauses here or there, but, um, I mean, there's a lot lacking right there with expression, with lightness. And I want to start working on those things at this point. A lot of people think, oh, we got to get it in tempo before we start working on voicing or dynamics. And I think that's the biggest misconception I see among students is they get it fast and then they try to add all these extra details in. So let's take a look. going to decide on that. I don't know if I want the first one to be bigger and then d die away on the second or drive to the second. Or if I want. Uh, I, th I think I'm leaning towards that one more. My shoulders were getting a little tight right there, so I'm going to try this time to bring an awareness. By the way, the reason I'm recording this, a lot of you are like, <laughs> we like that you actually talk when you're practicing, because there's a lot of famous pianists that, well, not a lot, but I know of a few that post their practice sessions occasionally, but they just sit and practice, and it's like, what the heck are they doing? So I'm trying to give you guys just a, a little look into how I practice by vocalizing some of these things. So... Um... <laughs> just focusing on my shoulder blades being back a little bit shoulders down I'm gonna practice just the top line of that wrist right there. Now this time I want an extra, I was listening to um, Daniel Trifonov's recording is uh, my favorite recording of this actually, um, that he did with uh, Pletnev on his Chopin evocation CD, just absolutely brilliant. And one thing that I was noticing today as I was listening through to that was his um, very deliberate vibrancy on so many of his top notes. I mean, whether it's this type of section, even when he's really soft, he has that vibrancy in there. So even in sections like this, I don't wanna, I don't want it to get muddled with all those. So, already that has new life to it. That's feeling good. Let's just take this. I, I don't know. Sometimes I get carried away and then I start practicing this. I don't really need as much work on that as I mean, this, this hairy little section. future. That's what I need to focus on. So try to, I mean, if, if you have to just put like 
your phone or a book or something right there just to not tempt you to play that next one. I've had to do that a lot of times. I'll just go ahead and leave that there um, just for the heck of it. One thing I was noticing in my last practice session, by the way, some people are fanatics about like doing threes, twos, and then three, one. I was noticing that that seemed to help me just to do thumb, thumb, two. Whoops. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do thumb, thumb. The reason a lot of people don't like 1-1 one, one is students can often tend to accent that. So just be, be aware to keep your thumb light. One thing, it's kind of a weird piece of advice. I remember I injured my wrist one time by over-practicing octaves. Um, and this was a really, really minor injury. Like this, this wasn't probably even an injury. It was just a little bit of a strain. Um, or if you've worked out too hard or something and you have a little forearm strain or something, pretend that you have that. And like you have to be kind of like extra loose. And that really helps. Because when you have full range of motion, your body feels great. It's actually easier to get that tension. When you have a little bit of, you know, strain going on or a little bit of um, pain or uh, fatigue even, uh, I want you to think of that. Like, think that you just, like, lifted a bunch of boxes and your forearms are, like, kind of, you know, tired at this point. Think of that type of, like, okay, I really don't have strength. My forearms are a little sore right now. That's what I want you to think of. And if you watch Babayan or Trifonov, who I just idolize both of those guys. They're just such amazing artists. Um, go watch their concert they gave at Verbier Festival together where they played uh, the Rachmaninoff suites for two pianos. Um, just absolutely astounding playing. But they both play like this, you know, a lot. I mean, it's just like, it's just the most relaxed playing you'll see. And that's what I'm getting at, right? will be the first one to tell all of you guys that uh, I hate cliches. I think they're very corny most of the times, but to quote a cliche that I really, I mean, I agree with it, but don't do it until you get it right. Do it until you can't get it wrong. That, I mean, just the little ring to that is just so cheesy, but it is true. As you noticed, I got that right quite a few times, but I'm just reinforcing it. I want it to become part of my nature. Ah, well, then I totally screw that up and play E major. <laughs> and then... Maybe a little lighter on the first one. the first one and then a little lighter here until that feels good oh i lost it a little bit i want to talk about that let's stop for just a second because that was pretty terrible as you could see on those parallel fourths a lot of people email me discouraged all the time they're like i work and work and work and it's perfect and then i come back to it the next day and it's like i didn't do any of that work again you, I remember it was like, I was studying for my AP European history exam as a junior in high school. Don't know why I ever took those AP classes. They were just way too much stress. I should have practiced more. <laughs> but anyway, um, my teacher said something like, you have to review a piece of information 19 times or something in order to truly have it memorized. And obviously certain people have more aptitude for memorizing than others. But as you see, as you saw, I played that passage fine. Like, 
rewind the video. It was sounding good. And now it kind of was terrible, you know? So let me just play this again. No stress. Stop stressing if something doesn't stay good. Just review it. It comes back even faster the next time and then the next time. That's why I can sit down and play the first Chopin Ballade pretty perfectly. I mean, it's, it's close to perfect, but I've been playing that piece since I was 14 years old. I'm 32 now, and I've competed with it in some of the biggest competitions I've played in. I've played it at, like, numberless amounts of concerts. I mean, just probably over a thousand times for audiences. So it's like, yeah, every time it comes back, it gets better. So don't fret if something's not staying good. It's back. Yeah, I didn't like that. feeling pretty good. <laughs> of course, it's after I get into these thirds right there that my fourths tend to not want to go well. One thing I was just subconsciously, well, I was consciously noticing it, obviously, um, but something that was just kind of talking at me in my brain was, you got to think of a little more legato connections to execute those fourths. That's feeling good. Terrible. Notice how I was kind of getting off book that time. thinking of in terms of harmony E major E major what's that B diminished seven okay actually it's G sharp diminished seven if I'm B D F G uh yeah it's G sharp diminished seven Th by the way there's only three notationally there's only three types of diminished seventh chords this one this one and this one and then everything else is an inversion of that so sometimes i'll just think oh that's b but it's actually g sharp diminished seven because we're going to a minor here okay so let's add this next little arpeggio well i guess we kind of come out of that and go to the e major so So we start in G sharp, diminish seven, go to the E major, or the E seven, if you want to think about that. At the very end, he introduces the seventh there. Okay. And he has, um, yeah, okay, so. memorize as you go and it's not this artificial muscle memory um, that you're developing you're actually developing a good intellectual memory because as you can see we're analyzing our key areas we're noticing where we go we're noticing hey that's kind of cramped up in here this for this G sharp diminished seven but have I gone through and meticulously memorized every single note no I haven't and if needed I can do that um, and that kind of brings me to an argument I have with myself a lot. How much should you prepare with that type of memory? Should you be able to write it out on paper? You probably should be able to. Sometimes 
I don't memorize to that degree, and that's probably why I occasionally have a memory slip. Um, so I have been more and more and more diligent with that over the years, uh, the more experience I have with analyzing music and uh, performing at a high level. I try to get it down to where uh, I will kind of meditate on it. So I will go through and just play it in my mind. This part, obviously, I'm not gonna sit here and play it in my mind because you guys wouldn't hear it, but. Hands alone, A sharp to B. What's my next note? F, G sharp, B. And then I go to the third, B, B G sharp. What's my next note? I think it's um, A sharp to B to A. Yes, it is. Okay, just double checking. As, as you can see, this is, I mean, I'm just memorizing it kind of right now. But you get off book pretty quick when you do this amount of analyzing. Now, this is not as hard of material as what we're about to dive into. Let's see how we're doing with time. Yeah, we've got another five minutes or so. So let's just dig into this a little bit. Um, so. Okay, so we're going A minor with some passing tones in here or some incomplete neighbor tones, whatever you want to call them. So that goes to A minor. That goes to B minor. Or sorry, uh, that goes to a B major. To the E minor. F sharp seven. And then B minor, F sharp, B minor. Okay, so let's just think of that. Okay, so I know that I'm gonna start on these E's. I know that I'm gonna step from the B to the A, and then C, B. What am I doing on my E minor? I don't know. C, B for my E minor. And then F sharp, E. D, E, F sharp. So I'm looking at the inner line right there, so. You know what? This is gonna be way too much information for me, so I'm just gonna start with that much. And if that's too much information for you, just slow it down. I'm sure Trifonov could look at this and have it memorized in like probably 30 seconds or Babayan or a lot of these other people. They're so much faster than I am. But you just take what is good for you and don't compare yourselves to others. Just compare yourself to yourself and try to get a little better each day, okay? So I'm not like getting depressed because I'm slower. I'm just saying, okay, I know my limits, but I'm gonna maximize uh, my efficiency because I know those limits, okay? So, and I'm always trying to set higher limits. Of course, I'm not just, uh, you know, static in my progress, but don't try to, don't get discouraged if something's not coming right away. So, I like to block things as well. Okay, so, that feels good. Maybe start less. Okay, now let's just add one more. Going to the A sharp there. You'll notice if you just sit and ponder on one thing like this. gets into your muscles but then when you go to like put it together with like if I went all the way back to here I might lose that like temporary muscle memory that I'm getting right there that was like the story of my life when I was memorizing rock three second movement and oh my gosh I would get a passage of like yes I've got it and then I'd back up a couple lines and then I'd screw it up again that second movement took me so long it's so chromatic and thick in so many places that it took me a long time to memorize so um that's actually feeling better than I thought it would. I think I am going to do the 3 2 1 there. Because I think that's too heavy, and 2 1 1, I still think is too heavy, so 3 2 1. That feels pretty good. Now that's screwing me up because I need to go to the B to the A. Okay, now let's review everything, see if we can keep that in my mind. I'm gonna go one time slowly. 
A lot of students will do all these sections, they'll get them all fast, and then they try to put it all together fast and they fail, and then they think, oh, all my work's undone. And no, it's not undone, it's just in a raw state right now. So try going slowly. So just a little hesitation getting into that, so I need you to think to go to the E. Okay, now when I come back to this tomorrow, uh, it may not be as good as that. It probably won't be, but it will come back in probably, so that took me close to 30 minutes here. That'll come back in five minutes tomorrow. The next day it might come back in two minutes. It might come back on my first or second try the very next day if I just keep reviewing this. And as you can see, I thought, oh, we might get through two pages. We barely got through one, but it's in pretty good shape right now. And I could I could take a half hour break and pretty confidently, especially if I went in a slower tempo, come back down and play that in a slow tempo. So I hope this gives you a little peek into how I work and um, I'll keep doing these videos. These are super fun. I like doing this and I've posted 400 plus videos on my channel. So I think conceptually we've covered a lot of different concepts like reducing tension, rotation, thirds, uh, scales, arpeggios. You know, we've gone through so many of those things. And then I also post uh, samples of pro practice and VIP uh, masterclass series videos, two of my paid courses. Um, but beyond that, I think some of these practicing videos can be kind of fun. So if any of you have any questions, my email's josh at joshwrightpiano.com. Um, I will link a few links in the description. Uh, one of them is for a free webinar containing 10 of my favorite tips to take your playing to that next level. So some of the things you saw today uh, and a bunch of other helpful suggestions. Um, the other two, two of the other links will be for my paid courses if you'd like to take your studies even deeper than this YouTube channel goes over. And then the last link will be for all of the gear I use to film these videos and other helpful gear if you're looking to set up Skype lessons or um, uh, just get some extra resources to help you in your studies. So have a great week. Good luck in your practice sessions.